Welcome to the Preferred Lies second podcast episode. This show is designed to bring the world of golf course rankings to the 21st century. My name is Pat Forbes and I'm your host. Today, we have Dave Sampson on the show. Dave was the lead golf course architect for the Marco Simoni restoration, which meant we get a look under the hood around routing logic, the need for drama in building a golf course, especially for the Ryder Cup, and then the Italian bidding process. Dave also breaks down his personal golf course rankings on preferredlie.com, including some global mentions such as Cruden Bay, Prestwick, Perrin Porth, and also some South African mentions like Humewood. Hope you enjoy. We have a dog who may stop barking. You may hear the train line. Whereabouts are you based right now? So we're based in Woking. Oh, nice. So we tend to work from home most of the time, but the, you know, the actual office is in Sunningdale, which is about 20 miles away. You know, I, I know uh, the introduction came from Alex, so I was lucky enough to play Woking and Werpleston with uh, Tim. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so it was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, you know, that whole, that whole region's amazing. Yeah. So I, I've only been to Surrey once, but um, yeah, I can't wait to get back and, and see some of the other golf courses as well. Nice. So that train line that you hear is the same tra- train line that goes past working. So yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And so you, you've been all over. Uh, definitely very curious to dive into your golf journey. Um, but yeah, are you, are you South African or did you just go to university in South Africa? So I grew up in South Africa, born in Manchester. Um, and then when we were three, the family moved out to um, South Africa. So it's been 20 years there growing up. So, I mean, I must say that your, your website's fascinating and I just can't stop, you know, playing around and, add, and adding stuff. But yeah, I mean, so, so you know, you may, if you've, if you've had a little look, there's, uh, there's a few South African courses that uh, obviously I played a lot when I was younger. And then, uh, but, but the majority of them will be UK. So yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm really excited to dive in, and I think we're coming at this world of golf course rankings probably from a similar place, given that we're Canadian and South African. Typically, our golf courses fall outside the top 100 in the world. But um, as you know, golf courses are a subjective and personal thing. <laughs> um, so, well, it's definitely. Uh, yeah. there, there, I was lucky enough to play the World University Games in um, Sun City in 2008. So I've, I've played one golf course in South Africa, uh, the Gary Player course, but uh, done a ton of research. And obviously, Durban and some of the other golf courses uh, in South Africa, I'm, I'm excited to dive in. And you know, I know you've been to like Russia, Saudi Arabia, France, Italy. I mean, these are. <laughs> <laughs> These are places that are not typically popping up in the top 100, and um, I'm excited to learn from you today. So, oh, uh, well, I'm not sure how much learning we're going to get, but we're going to have a good chat about it. Yeah. For, so for those who are seeing this that don't know who Dave Sampson is, help us understand who you are and um, how you got involved in Marco Simone in, in the first place. So I'm, I'm a golf course architect uh, working for European Golf Design. Um, so we got four four architects in the office, and I guess you know there's no you know the, I, I guess timing of the jobs and who gets the jobs is, is all got to do with other work schedules. Um, and you know I, I was I'll pull my hands up and say I feel very fortunate that I was maybe a little bit quieter than others at that particular time when the project came along. Um, so that's I mean that's how I got involved. You know like. Um, that uh, was back in 2017. Um, the company was involved as part of the, you know, the bid process in 2015. So we um, we evaluated a few of the sites in and around Rome as part of the bid documents, uh, which actually Alex um, that you mentioned earlier, he actually um, he worked on as well. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until 2017 that I that I got involved um, in in the project. Um, so design was 2017, construction was back in with 2018, yeah. What were your first impressions when you first walked the property? I thought uh, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, there's a lot of potential on the site. Um, large, large amount of elevation change. Um, and we pretty much knew that you know, the site was pretty much a blank canvas. 
as part of Marco Simone being awarded uh, and, and sorry, well, the the Italian bid being awarded the uh, the Ryder Cup. Um, yeah, we knew it was pretty much going to be a blank canvas, and that you know the existing golf course was going to change one hundred percent. So um, you know the elevation change um, provided us with a lot of um, opportunity, uh, a lot of potential, uh, especially for for both the golf and for the spectators. Because Ryder Cup is not just about you know the, the golf holes, um, but it's also about providing you know infrastructure and. Uh, Providing a platform for for the spectators to enjoy enjoy the spectacle. So my my parents always taught me to own my mistakes. I hear you saying Marco Simoni, not Marco Simone. Can we get it on the record that it is Marco Simoni? Uh, it's Marco Simoni. Yeah, but you, but a lot of people call it Marco Simone, so you wouldn't. I mean, either goes, and I think people will be calling it whatever they want. But I think the locals call it Marco Simoni. Good to know. Good to know. I'm, I'm going to adjust my uh, behavior going forward. So that's, yeah. I told you you were going to teach me a lot today. This is great. Well, well, well. That might be the only thing. <laughs> so I, I do want to get into your line. So I'm, I'm wondering if you can share your screen and we can actually start to uh, look at look at Dave's influences. Sure. He- heavily impacted. <laughs> By uh, UK courses, I think it would be fair to say. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same way. So, for the for the viewers or listeners who don't necessarily see what I'm seeing right now, I'm going to walk through your lie and your bucket list. So, number one, your lie: we've got the old course, followed by Turnberry, the Isla, uh, Sunningdale Old, Royal Port Rush, Dornick, Porth Call. Uh, we just saw a ridiculous senior open uh, a few weeks ago. North, North Barrett, Cruden Bay, Prestwick, and Sunningdale New. Those are that rounds out your top ten on the bucket list. Augusta, Cypress, uh, San Francisco Golf Club, Royal Melbourne, uh, Muirfield, uh, Royal St George's, St George's Hill, West Sussex. You're telling me you're from Surrey and you haven't been out to St George's or or yeah. Royal St George's? Well, well, you see, so. So I thought I'd put a few in the area that I haven't played that I really want to play. Swin- on. Swinley's so, on there as well. That, I mean, I know, I know. Um, and, and I mean, there, there are there are many more courses on the bucket list that would feature much higher than those. But the bottom the bottom five are the you know the five in and around the area that I'm you know, embarrassingly <laughs> haven't managed to get onto yet. So. Um, well, and, and the thing is, so obviously the good friend Tim worked at St. George's Hill. And I've been for a walk around there, but I've never, never played it. So, uh, I mean, if we come back to your live for a second, uh, if we scroll up to the top. So let, let's just talk a little bit about uh, some of the standout golf courses that you've played and why, why you've got maybe the top 10 ranked as you do. Right. Uh, well, I mean... <laughs> The old course, I think it speaks for itself. I mean, I, I've, I've played, played there numerous times and walked it as well, uh, quite a few times. And yeah, I, I just, every time I go there, I feel it just gets better and better. Um, and I just, just love the way that you can just, you know, find, find your own way. Um, yeah. And I think it helps that the majority of times that I've, I've played it, I've played reasonably well. So it always helps. Um, but yeah, I just it's not just the the golf course; it's 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 the whole place. Um, it's, it's just you know get super excited every time I go up there. So yeah, well, it's number one. Uh, Trump Turnbury, the Elsa. Um, I played it before the renovation, and yeah, I mean it was a it was a cold March day. We got hailed on; it was miserable. Um, but then I was fortunate enough to play it this year uh, and go back and play the. Played again. I was just blown away by the um, by the golf course, the changes. I thought it was it was just I thought it was spectacular, um, and it, and it really did push uh, the old course very close. Um, then Sunningdale Old. I mean, Sunning, Sunningdale Old. We've um, we've our offices in Sunningdale, um, so we've been fortunate enough to play there quite a few times. So. Um, it's just a, it's just a, a, a great golf course. Um, yeah, and yeah. With it being so close and having played it so many times, it's just uh, 
yeah, somewhere that I, I, I really enjoy going. It's yeah, special place. Uh, well, Port Rush, uh, went, went over in 2019, played there with a group of friends. Um, yeah, we had a, <laughs> we had an interesting day. It was windy. Um, and you know, you, I don't know if you, I don't know if you played Port Rush, but they've obviously got the starter and there's, there's OB left and right. And a few of us hit our first T balls out of bounds, um, of which I was one. Uh, the, the uh, couple of guys hit another one out of bounds game, and we were just asked by the starter to go and take some laterals up at the top. So it was, it was, it was pretty embarrassing from that point of view. But I mean, uh, yeah, really good. Uh, Dornick, great golf course. I'd uh, love to get back up there. Uh, played there, I think, 2017, uh, before they changed seven and eight. So I'd like to, to see what they've done done on that. Um, but, yeah, that, yeah that's a, a proper proper test of golf, proper golf course. Really, really enjoy it. Uh, Paul Call, played it a few times. Uh, yeah, just just think it's such a such a strong golf course, such a, yeah, it's a great test. Um, I mean, North, North, I think the next yeah. three, uh, I think they're probably on my fun list as well, but North Berwick, Cruden and Prestwick are just, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. the superlatives of Prestwick and all the, all the great holes and the famous golf holes, you know, speaks for themselves and I'm, you know, I'm desperate to actually get back there and have a, have another game, uh, hopefully next year. Um, Cruden, uh, in some of the scenery, some of the dunes, some of the, I mean, we played it in an absolute hooly way. Nice. Um, rain coming in sideways, but man, so uh, there's the, 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 the landscape was just, just fantastic. Right. Fantastic. Um, and then, and then Prestwick, uh, played it when we played Turnbury, um, played Prestwick on that trip. I mean, we had four of the most amazing yeah. days. You know, not a breath of wind. But Prestwick was one of those standout golf days in my whole life. Uh, we had the full experience. Um, you know, pitching up jacket and tie, having the you know the, the the cup of tea before the game, going out, playing around, coming back for the Prestwick lunch. And you know, for your listeners that are familiar with Kummel, you don't walk out of the you know <laughs> as straight as we did. Yeah. But uh, I just thought it was just it just Fabulous golf club, yeah. you know. It's just so old school. The um, you know that tee shot on one with the with the the railway right next to it. Um, I mean, it, it's one of those things that we we could never get away with doing now. I mean, you you pitch up everything is so compact. You've got fourteen green next to the car park, fifteen tee, eighteen green, the putting green, one tee, all within like sixty seventy yards. Just, just unbelievable. Um, but yeah, I, do, I mean, it was just one of those great days, you know. And uh, yeah, we started at, you know, pitched up at there about nine nine thirty, and yeah, got home very late. <laughs> it was just a great day. Yeah, and then and then and then, you know, then Sunningdale, Sunningdale knew obviously the affiliation with being so close to Sunningdale. You know, just two two two, two splendid golf courses. Um, it's, yeah. Um, so as I see this list, I. I um, I'm familiar with five of them, or played five of them. Um, I have the opposite story of, of Presswick. So when our son was six weeks old, we were over there for a project with um, the RNA at Muirfield for the Women's Open last year. And uh, leading up to that, uh, my cousin and I, my uh, brother and, and dad, we were meant to play um, Troon in the morning and then Presswick in the afternoon. I... I Played well at Troon in the morning, then got a call from my wife saying her son is violently ill. So I'm standing at the first tee of Presswick and I had to leave. <laughs> so it's like one of the one of the worst drives back to uh, back to Glasgow from, yeah. from Presswick, but we'll get back there one day. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, Presswick. seven, eight, nine of your lists. I mean, the quirk factor in all three of those, and the fun factor in all three of those, are not surprising are in your fun list. So. Let's go down a little bit. Let's go to some yeah. of the other widgets. Knowing the uh, time that we do have, uh, what I'd like to call out is some of the more unknown golf courses that are maybe 11 and beyond on your lie yeah. and then any of the other widgets that you've populated on the courses or track side of things. 
So I'll, uh, the world's your oyster. I'll follow yeah. your lead, whichever you want to talk about. Well, I'll, I'll go to 17 um, and Paranporth down in Cornwall. I don't know if you've ever been down there, um, but it's it's a pretty dramatic site right on the CH. Um, yeah. I mean, blind shot, shots galore. Uh, just, just pretty bonkers, but I, I thought... Thoroughly had a great time, and and it was blowing blowing a gale that day, and it was just I don't know I think I think through I think there's just something about playing links golf and playing in the wind, yeah. um, which you know they're always the standout memories, you know because okay you might not have had a great great game, but there were, there could be a couple of shots in a round where you've just hit the perfect shot, used the wind or into the wind or what, whatever it is, you, you know that they, they'll they will always. You know, stand in your memories, and I think, um, yeah, you know, Par- Paranport has got some some really dramatic golf holes. About it. You know, this, the setting is great, and um, yeah, we played in a windy day, and yeah, really enjoyed that. Uh, then, obviously, number twenty is, you know, most definitely got to be somewhere else. Yeah, there. for sure. <laughs> well, let me let me walk through this. So, um, so again, for those who aren't seeing this, Dave, um, we're now on his lie. He's got Paranport seventeen, uh, Roll True Old eighteen. Fern down 19, Marco Simone 20, followed by Woking, Broadstone, Lytham, and then Royal Liverpool and Hoy Lake, as we all just witnessed. So you, you for the record, have Marco Simone ahead of Wo- Woking, <laughs> Lytham, and Hoy Lake. Well, that is controversial. Oh, well, you know, I, I mentioned a little earlier, there's going to be some slight <laughs> little bit of bias in some of it. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I've got to be honest, you know, like Leatherman and Liverpool, um, you know, they, they, they weren't my, I've got to, they weren't my favorites, um, open venues that I, that I, that I played. Um, but, you know, as, as we said, you know, everybody's got their own opinion. Um, I just, yeah, I just, you know, just felt there was a few, you know, if I think back to the, the golf course and the round, there's just, just too many holes that I just couldn't, rem- couldn't really remember them. Yep. So, yeah. Um, then I've got one at 25, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's a course in South Africa, which is my favorite golf course. Um, it's probably, you know, one, one, or t- one of the only real links, and it's called Humewood, um, down in Port Elizabeth. And it was, a, it was where I went to university, and the, the golf course was right next, to, um, the, right next to the university. And, you know, if we said we were part of the university golf team, you know, we could get on there for twenty rand, which was which is the equivalent of not even a pound. So you know, you know, to be able to play, I mean, it's 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 ranked in the top ten in South Africa um, all the time. But it's just a, you know, you know, one of those old classic courses in in South Africa. A real, you know, as I say, one of the only links courses that they that they really do have. Um, and yeah, just 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 some really fun memories of you know. University golf, so you know, there's is it, list, so I can put it with, with, with my life. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Is it like is it is it yeah. does it have an element of charm? Is it big? Is it small? Like tell, I, I've never been there, so tell me a little bit more about it. You know, it's, it I would say it's it's quite a big golf course. Um, you know, the wind really blows. Uh, blows. Elizabeth is known in the in South Africa as the windy city. Um, so you know, you, you will. I mean, because the wind. Blows in two prominent, uh, predominant directions. You know, you can, you know, play some holes. You know, that are par fives on the course. They'll play as par fours, and then vice versa. So you, you know, the holes are, you know, are constantly changing. There you go. The dog, the dog is going crazy. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, but I mean, it, you know, because of the windy nature of the other side, you know, the fairways are quite, quite generous. Um, but if you go beyond the fairways in the semi, you get into some proper. Proper jungle and where, where where the snakes live, so you don't really want to be going too much further. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it. I think you know, I grew up in a place called Pretoria, which is you know at a high altitude, um, and you can hit the ball miles, and you didn't really have to factor in any wind up there. And I think you know, it's just the whole you know the, sh- the shot making uh, playing around there, and obviously with it being. So close to university, it was just um, yeah, just just really good memories, really. Yeah, you often hear of those uh, 
who go to the University of St. Andrews and end up caddying there. But it sounds like uh, Hume Wood was a pretty, pretty damn good experience for you to have so close to school. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, right, where, where, where else do we want to... I mean, I'm just going down. Yeah, where, wherever yeah. you want to take it. And I don't know if you populated any below the bucket list on the right or if it's all it's all under my lie right now but um yeah if, it's, i'll follow it's, you uh, i mean I, I i yeah i i threw in um i threw i mean pair and force i i just really enjoyed it. I, I threw that into a hidden gem and i threw it into most final and i as i said i was i'm i'm, I'm very new to this and i i'm, I'm having a lot of fun <laughs> but i'm just seem to be lumping in a whole lot of golf courses uh, for sure right. Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the, one of the nice courses I've in, in Europe that I've, that I really enjoy playing is, uh, PGA Catalonia, which is, uh, in it Spain, is. just outside the place called Girona. Um, I mean, that's, uh, you know, the a, a tournament, tournament style course, got a lot of water, uh, a lot of pine trees in and around the golf holes. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a really nice, you know, resort. Uh, two good golf courses, obviously the stadium being the standout. Um, yeah, there's, um, yeah, thought I'd add a couple of European courses of course. in here as well. And I think, um, the, the European ones are sort of beach, uh, I would say slightly lower down the list. I think, you know, the, the, the main ones are probably, um, probably the UK. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, it's I'm 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 going down. This it's quite low down, but it, and number fifty six is a course called Wingate Park. But that's where I where I was a member. So I uh, as in Pretoria. So I, I felt it was only right to to add it yeah, to this. Yeah, for list. sure. Um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's uh, it's it's just a good members country club golf okay. course. Wouldn't, wouldn't rank too highly in South Africa, but you know. A lot, of, a lot of bias in the list. Um, For sure, I've heard, yeah. I've heard great things about Durban. But, yeah, you mentioned you mentioned Durban, and you know that's. I wish it was higher on the list, but D- D- Durban is is quite a Jekyll and Hyde golf course, in my opinion. Um, you've got like nine holes in some unbelievably rumpled links terrain, and then you've got nine holes which are just very yeah. flat. <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, but I mean, I think I think I, I may be wrong. But it's if it hasn't, it's one of the one of the most. It's a golf club that's hosted the South African Open, you know, on the most occasions or one of the most occasions. So you know, they, they they're continually going there. I mean, it's you know, it's one of the, the classic classic courses in the country, um, and it's I mean, it's got an interesting start because you've got two and four, which are which are both par threes. Um, and then, and, and I'd say, you know, they, they, they sort of, I mean, they're not forgotten, but because they come so early in the round, they're great par threes, but they just, you know, they are, because they're at two and four, they're not as, yes. you know, if they came at 16 or 17, they may have been, you know, even, even known even yeah. better. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's. You know, it's it's still it's still a good golf. It's a, it's amazing um, how much the momentum and the journey and the story of a golf course how how important that is. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, and I mean, I mean, there will obviously have been a reason. I mean, and, and and most probably the reason was back in the day that you know you just fit the best holes to the best piece of land, and it just comes what it comes. Yep. That's for sure. That's how it is. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, let's let's leave the listeners with one one final question. Um, you know, if uh, if the Ryder Cup blank, so this is the fill in the blank. If the Ryder Cup at the end of September blanks, I will be very pleased uh, mm-hmm. with the result of the event. So let's let's hear where your brain goes. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm going to go before. I'm going to put my. I'm going to move the Please blank. Please do. Yeah. If that's Please right. do. If Europe wins the Ryder Cup, I will be very glad with the outcome. <laughs> so even even the guy who's designed the golf course is 
still rooting for his home team to win over uh, patrons or the global golfing community speaking positively of this golf course. So <laughs> that's loyalty. Uh, <laughs> Look, hey, everybody's gonna have everybody's gonna have their opinion. I think, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I think I think at the end of the day, if if the um, you know if the course delivers on the drama and you get a great spectacle, that you know that's that was the main thing we set out to achieve. You know, was to you know provide a spectacle for the spectators that are obviously going to be on site, and obviously the people that are going to be around, uh, watching around the world. Um, so hopefully, you know. It'll be a really tight Ryder Cup with Europe winning 14 and a half, 13 and a half. And, and if you fell asleep, if, you, <laughs> if, if the viewers fell asleep earlier, Dave has Marcus Simone ranked ahead of Hoylake and Lidham. Good stuff. Dave, thanks so much, Dave. Really, really enjoyed having you on. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for having me. In this for sure. Yeah, please. And that's a wrap. Episode two of the Preferred Live podcast is officially in the books. Thank you, Dave Sampson, for sharing your global golf journey with us. To all our users, you can find Dave's full list of rankings on preferredlie.com. Just check out the My Community section. Over the next few months, we'll be rolling out some more app-focused content. So stay tuned to better understand how to manage your own rankings on preferredlie.com. Also, stay tuned for episode three, featuring Ian Andrew, who dives into his recent work at TPC Toronto. If you haven't already, sign up for our newsletter as well. With your help and your opinions, we believe we can fix this broken golf course ranking space together. Thanks, everybody.